Hello and welcome back to the unnamed particle tutorial series thing. Today we're going to be looking at applying forces over time, which you might be thinking, hey, didn't we like learn about applying forces and shit in the last video? Well, you are wrong. Here's why. A particle system has two kind of stages. Here's our test emitter from, from last time. Basically, there's the particle spawn where we apply initial forces. So this is just applying a force at the very start. What we're going to be doing in this video is exploring all of the ways we can apply forces during the particle's lifetime. So for example, we can use a drag force to make the particles slow down as they, you know, as they progress through their lifetime. So if we put the drag up to like five or something, you can see that these particles shoot out, but then they stop after a while. Drag is probably one of the most important things to be adding to your particles because otherwise they kind of just go everywhere and you've got no control over them. 90% of particles that you're going to be creating will have drag on them. Uh, another really handy force is curl noise force. So you can see that these particles don't have any force applied at the start of their lifetime. This does look very pretty. Yes, very simple, very pretty. But if we add some curl noise force, you can see that it's kind of just this random little air streams is probably a good way to look at it. So if we put the, you know, the strength up to like very high, you can adjust the frequency of it. So the lower the frequency, the bigger the overall kind of noise pattern is. It's a three dimensional noise. So this is just a really good way to add some variation and randomness to all your particles. And honestly, just it by itself looks very nice. Now, one thing that I always like to do is actually put the noise quality at low all the time, just because it is the cheapest and I really can't notice the difference between the low quality and the the high quality one, the low quality noise is perfectly fine because I'm just looking for that little bit of randomness. So what I'm going to show you now is another way that the initial velocity is different to the forces over time. So you can see here, we've got this particle thing. It's doing like an explosion and then they're all just stopping. I've got some drag applied. So let's get this velocity and make it between a hundred and a thousand. But if we do a particle update, we'll do a point attractor force. So all of these particles are going to get kind of sucked back in. Uh, we're going to do the attraction radius to like very big and the attraction strength will do to 10. So you can see now they're all getting sucked back in after that initial burst of, of stuff. Uh, you can see if the drag was lower or if there was no drag, um, you'd actually get this kind of wobbling effect uh, because they will get attracted to that middle point, but then shoot past that because their force ended up being uh, greater than... It overcame the drag, basically. Another really useful force is the vortex force. So you can see here, this is obviously a vortex. Um, we could even combine vortex and point attraction force to, you know, start to get some wacky shit going on. So we've got that initial velocity burst. And then after that initial burst, we're doing some, you know, more subtle things with it. If you just keep doodling around with all of these settings, you'll be able to figure out what they do and how they can be quite useful. So we could combine point attraction force and the vortex force and drag and get some real, you know, wacky effects. All right, another fun example we'll take a little look at is uh, we're going to use this point attractor force, which we looked at just before. So we've got that initial burst, bam, and then they're all going to get sucked back in. But what we can do is actually counteract that with a point force, which is a force from a point. So if we say force strength, a thousand. This is going to push everything out from the center, uh, but we can make a fall off distance of a hundred or something. So this should, yeah, kind of balance out 
that, um, the point attraction force, if that makes sense. So these are all going to come back to this point, but then the point force with a fall off distance of a hundred is going to push them back out. So one thing to keep in mind with all of these point forces and stuff, they will follow the origin of the system. So if I move this over, they are going to keep getting attracted to wherever the widget of the system is, if that's what you've specified. So the last two forces we're going to be looking at that are really, really common in Niagara particles are gravity force. By default, this is set at negative 980, which is gravity, you know, gravity's acceleration per second per second. And you can see here, these particles just go bam and they all fall down and it looks pretty dope. If the drag is higher, uh, they will reach a sort of like terminal velocity that's slower than if they had no drag. So if that was zero, you can see that they're just going everywhere and they end up going quite fast, bam. But if the, you know, drag was at 10, then they kind of just dribble downwards. And lastly, but not least, there is the wind force module. Usually what I'll do is use the wind speed as the directional vector. So if we just say one in X, then the wind speed scale is what we do to, you know, say, hey, we're doing wind in this direction, you know, 100 units, blah, 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 blah. And the air resistance is, as the little widgety thing says, how quickly a particle matches the goal wind speed. So if we have this air resistance at zero and we have the wind scale at like a thousand or something, you can see that they very quickly get caught up in the wind. Uh, if the air resistance was higher, then you'll see it takes way longer for them to reach that wind's uh, velocity. Now the difference between wind force and just applying a force in a direction, like an acceleration force in a direction. Uh, the wind force, as it says here, applies a wind force to particles with an optional air resistance parameter. If the particle is moving faster than the wind speed in the direction of the wind, no additional force is applied. One other thing, obviously all of these can be combined. We can do our curl noise force. We've got drag going. The, the curl noise force is very useful to pair up with wind force so that everything isn't just like going like in straight lines and stuff. It just, again, adds that nice noise. So you can see that all these particles are getting blown in the direction that we specified for the wind and they've got that little bit of randomness for it. Now you might have a wind system set up in your project. So like a, a global wind system, like the tutorial that I have up here. If you want this to just kind of inherit that wind value, you will need to learn about Niagara parameter collections, which is something we're going to be doing uh, in an upcoming video. So make sure that you <laughs> so make sure that you are subscribed and you've rung that little MF bell. But aside from that shameless plug, we are done with this video. I hope that you learned something, uh, even if you are a Niagara particle master. As always, if you liked the video, then like the video. And again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss all the, all the rest of the fucking, you know. If you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month through the Patreon, which is linked in the description. I do stream on Twitch. We're actually streaming on Twitch right now and recording this. It's a lot of fun. Is, is everyone having fun? No one's having fun. That's fine. Um, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I guess with that, we say goodbye. Good goodbye. <laughs> goodbye.